Good afternoon, learners, and welcome to another session of Telematics Accounting. Well, as your exam is looming, your, your trial exam, I just hope that you'll pay attention today and at least take home something that, you know, you can remember and apply in your exam. Today, we're going to be covering manufacturing, and in fact, you only have two sessions this term. So I'll be covering manufacturing, and my colleague at a later stage will be covering budgeting. So those are the two topics that we'll be covering. And my encouragement to you is you need to start studying already. Don't wait for the last. You know, accounting is a subject that you have to apply. So I'm encouraging you to study and to work hard. Well, today, let's get into it. And I would like you to take your, second, your third term booklet that you got, the pink booklet, and I want you to go to the page in your question book, not in your answer book, in your question book, it's page four. So please turn to page four, where we're just going to be covering a few uh, terms and terminology before we actually get into manufacturing. So go to page four in your question book, leave your workbook or your answer book for now. And this is what the page looks like. It has a few questions on it. Right, so there we have questions. The first question is the difference between fixed and variable cost. The second one is explain the term break-even point, and these are all important terms that you need to know to be able to equip you for this section. Examples of factory overhead costs, we're going to be looking at that. Examples of administration costs, and example of sales and distribution costs. Now, learners, once you know the terms and terminology, then you'll be able to answer a question. So that is why I did not want to go straight into the question because I first wanted to explain this so that when I get to the question, I can say, remember, when we looked at sales and distribution costs, this particular cost file under there, so we won't use it, or yes, we will use it. So I want you to take your pen in your hand and you're going to start writing as I go over these terms. Please only take out keywords. I've prepared a short PowerPoint for that. So please only take out the keywords uh, for, for the section. So let's go to our PowerPoint and let's look at manufacturing. Okay. So manufacturing, this you don't have to write down, but it's really the process of turning raw materials into finished products. And so this whole section covers the fact that you're turning raw materials that you buy into a finished product. So let's look at the first question. The difference between fixed and variable costs. So you're going to write in the block and you're only going to choose keywords. Right. So what is a fixed cost? A fixed cost is a cost or, or, or are costs that do not change according to the number of units made. Okay, my example I used here is rent expense. If you are a business and you are paying for a building and you have rent expense, if you produce five units, you're still going to pay rent for that month. If you produce a thousand units, your rent will stay the same. So that is a fixed cost. It doesn't change when your production levels changes. It stays the same. Then you have a variable cost. A variable cost or variable costs are costs that will increase when production increases. So as your production increases or decreases, that cost will increase or it will decrease. Example here is raw materials. If I produce five units, I'm only going to need raw materials for five units. But if I produce a thousand units, I'm going to need raw materials for a thousand units. So obviously, my raw material expense will be more if I produce more units. But my rent expense will stay the same whether I produce five or whether I produce a thousand. So that answers that question. Our next question is, explain the term break-even point. So break-even point is the following. It is the number of units, so it's the number of units, just let's use shorthand here, only write the number of units that needs to be produced and sold in order to generate enough income from your sales to equal fixed cost. So at the point of your break even, the that number, whether it's five units 
would be enough the money or the or the the the, the revenue let's call it the revenue the revenue you generate from the five units if that's the break even point will be enough revenue to be able to cover your fixed cost from manufacturing we are going to look at break even and the calculation later on and then i will explain this again then if i'm going to fast learners you must please tell me uh, someone said here yeah, the break even point is where the business makes no profit or loss that's not entirely true because at that point they're covering their fixed costs so they could at that point they would not have made a profit or a loss but they can still make potential profits and losses okay so you must just consider that 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 is not the entire a, a definition of a break-even point you have to expand on it so you have to say they've already covered their fixed costs so at that point they're making neither a profit nor a loss but they are going to make further profits when they start selling more than the break-even but just remember, and I'll explain that later on, is that your variable cost will still be a cost that you're going to have to pay in the future. But I will discuss that later on. So let's look at our next definition. Examples of factory overhead costs. I see that I'm going too fast, so I'll slow down a bit. Examples of factory overhead costs. I'm going to try and go through this slowly. And learners, you have to write fast because I need to get through quite a bit of work today. So... There's the factory foreman. Okay, so the factory foreman, he oversees the factory process and his salary is indirect. So his salary, the factory foreman's salary is indirect labor. Okay, so please write that down. He's the supervisor that oversees that the factory workers work hard enough. So write down the factory foreman's salary is indirect labor. Then, the cleaning staff of the factory. Remember, it's factory overhead costs. So anything with regards to the factory will be our factory costs. So our indirect costs will be factory or indirect labor cleaning wages Okay, of the cleaning staff. That's indirect labor, but only the cleaning staff that cleans the factory. Remember, we're talking about factory overhead costs. So only the cleaning staff that cleans the factory. If a cleaner is cleaning the office, it will not form part of factory overhead costs. And I'm going to explain that later again. Then, indirect materials. That is the, I will give you the definition later on, but it's all the things that we cannot quantify. We cannot really quantify as part of the the product so we cannot look and say that amount went into the product and i will explain that later as well so part of factory overhead costs is indirect materials or another word for that is consumable stores then factory rent is also a factory overhead cost factory rent that will be a factory overhead cost okay it's the rent that you pay for the portion of the of the building where the production takes place that's the factory the factory is the place where the production takes place they produce in the factory so that is also a factory overhead cost then factory maintenance if they're maintaining the machines that is a factory overhead cost so factory maintenance will also be a factory overhead cost and then factory insurance. Can you see each time we put the word factory there so that you can see that it's part of the factory overhead costs. And so that is a clear indication that that portion, the rent, the maintenance, the insurance goes to the factory. And someone says factory machinery. It is, remember, we're talking about costs. Machinery is an asset. So... We're going to talk about depreciation on the factory machinery. So factory machinery is not an overhead cost, but the depreciation on the factory machinery is an overhead cost. And there we go. Depreciation on factory equipment. You must understand that the equipment is an asset, but the depreciation on it is a cost. Okay? So please don't get confused with that. Then... Examples of administration costs. If I think of administration, 
you must think now that it's not the factory. So that really, the, or the next two examples, has got nothing to do with the production cost statement. Okay, but these are still costs to the process. And I'll talk about this later. Someone said renting of the factory, and we said yes, factory rent is a product, sorry, a factory overhead cost. So administration costs, let's see what that is. Accountant salary, this is, if, we, if you say administration, think of the office. You know, the office where there's no, they don't produce in the office, so they're really just doing administration work there, so think of the office. So the accountant salary, that's an admin cost. The bookkeeper's salary is an admin cost. The receptionist's salary is an admin cost. The cleaning, now remember earlier we had cleaning in factory overhead costs as well. But that is the cleaning to the admin block. I cannot slow down learners, you really have to write fast because I have to get through so much work. So the cleaning staff to the admin block that is an administration cost. So you're just filling in your block on page number four. Office stationery. Office, you see now we're using the word office. Office stationery is an administration cost. Office rent is an administration cost. So when you talk office, it's office rent. It does not form part of production. Insurance on the office equipment. The insurance on the factory machinery, that is a factory overhead cost, but the insurance on the office equipment is, does not form part of production. Depreciation on office equipment, that is an administration cost. Office telephone, okay, those are all examples of administration costs. Someone said the telephone cost and the auditor's salary. If you have an internal auditor, then clearly, yes, they will work in the office. So that will be an administration cost as well. And the telephone cost to the office. That will be a, an administration cost. Now we're going to look at examples of sales and distribution costs. And remember, I'm just giving you definitions and you're writing it down. So this is the last block that we're filling in. Sales and distribution costs. So you can think here, sales and distribution. Here, they are involved in the marketing of the products. They're selling the products. Okay, so let's look there. Sales manager's salary. So, the person who actually manages the sales office, they are part of sales and distribution costs. So, the sales manager's salary. Sales representative's commission. These are the people who go out and sell the products. They market the products um, to people and then they earn a commission. So, it's all sales and a sales represent, uh, sales um it's, it's with regards to sales, I'm sorry. Sales of salary of delivery man. Okay, so now the products are completely finished and the person must deliver it to the shops. So the salary of the delivery man or the delivery person, that is a sales and distribution cost. Bad debts. Now I've highlighted this learners, bad debts and advertising. You're going to find that in an exam, they usually put bad debts as part of the costs and advertising as part of the cost. Please do not include that in your production cost statement because your production cost statement will be costs or expenses, another word for, for costs or expenses. So your production cost statement is a statement where you're going to calculate the cost of producing the item. And your bad debts and your advertising does not form part of production costs. It forms part of sales and distribution costs. So please don't get confused with that. And that's why I highlighted bad debts and advertising because it does not form part of production costs. Then stationary costs. That is stationary to the sales and distribution. But so stationary costs will also be a sales and distribution cost. Rent to the sales and distribution division. 
to the sales and distribution division and then depreciation on delivery vehicle. Salaries to the sales staff and that is it. So someone has reminded me, yes, that the notes are on the Mind the Gap book, but not all schools got the Mind the Gap book. And you had to fill this in on your telematics notes, so I thought that I had to go through it. But if you have the Mind the Gap book, please go to page 38 and you'll find all these, these definitions there. So thank you so much for um, reminding me of that so that I could explain it to the learners. So now you're going to go to page, let me just get my notes right, sorry, to page 2. Okay, we're going to do activity one now. So please go to page two of your workbook. Open up to page two of your workbook. Okay, and we're going to do activity one. We're going to draw up the production cost statement and we are going to draw up the note. It's a very important note that you have to draw up. And it's the note. I'll explain to you now. Sorry, I just want to get my notes sorted out. There we go. The note to factory overhead costs. So please, it's on page five. And I'm hoping that you're all there. Okay. So, it says here in 1.1.1, we must do the following for the year. The factory overhead note, okay? which is generally asked, and if you look at the mark allocation, the mark allocation is 20 marks. I'm highlighting that because you have to know what your factory overhead costs are so that you can put those costs in the note. So I'm going to use my yellow highlighter and we're going to read through the question quickly and we're going to just highlight all the factory overhead costs that I spoke about earlier on. So if you have a highlighter or a pen, please take it because that really makes your calculation a lot easier. You see, learners, accounting is not only about getting the answer on the page. It is also getting the answer on the page accurately and very quickly. So if you really want to finish your exams in accounting, then you have to work smart. So what I would do is because I know what my expenses are and I know what I'm looking for, I am either going to highlight or underline all my factory overhead costs so that I can put it in that note. It is 20 marks, so it's quite a bit of marks. So let's look at our page again. Okay, here we have, remember I said, indirect materials are factory overhead costs. So I'm going to use indirect materials. I also want to point out to you learners that this year is stock balances. So they give you the stock balances at the beginning of the year. Just look at the layout as well. And then at the end of the year. So those there is my, that's my opening stock. Okay. And that there is my closing stock. And I, I do that because I see lots of learners get very confused. Because we generally, I mean, we always read from left to right. When, they, when they're choosing or doing the exercise, they choose that as their opening stock and that as their closing stock. But you must be aware of the dates. 1st July 2011, opening stock. 30 June 2012 is closing stock. So I've got my indirect materials that I'm going to use later on. Then, in my definition, I did not choose raw materials as a factory overhead cost. So I'm actually going to ignore that for now. That is a direct cost. So my raw materials will be my direct cost and I'll use that later. Then I've got factory rent. That I identified as a factory overhead cost. And remember I spoke to you earlier on, you're not going to use advertising. That is a sales and distribution cost. So you're not going to use that at all in your calculation. Then I have factory maintenance. I'm going to use factory maintenance because that is a factory overhead cost. 
I will do my calculations later on, but I just want so that when I do my note, I can choose out then all my costs that I have identified. Water and electricity. Now I'm going to see water and electricity, yes, but what portion goes to the factory? 70% of that amount will go to the factory. That's what's said. So I'm only going to use in my note 70% of that amount. Indirect materials, there we have it again. Indirect materials. Okay, so I'm going to use that amount. And then depreciation, but not all my depreciation. I'm only going to use factory machinery. So indirect materials, I'm also going to be aware of the 80% later on. So on the next page, on page 6, I have the following sundry expenses okay and I want to see what portion of my sundry expenses will go to the factory so it says sundry expenses paid 21,000 the ratio of space used by the factory office and sales department is 4 is to 2 is to 1 factory is to office is to sales department so I'm only going to use that portion for my factory overhead costs salaries and wages I'm not going to use everything I'm looking for my indirect labor okay so let's see what is my indirect labor wages paid to the cleaner but she spends 50% of her time in the factory so remember you can have a cleaner in the office and you can have a cleaner in the factory. She spends 50% of her time in the factory. Then it says, three workers are employed, three factory workers. I'm not going to use that now because that is my direct labor. Okay, so that's my indirect labor there. That's my direct labor. I'm not going to use this in the note. I will use it later on. And then the factory foreman. Okay, and I'm going to use that information later on when I do my note. I'm not going to do the salary paid to the office assistant. So very quickly, learners, I've gone through my exercise and I've identified which expenses or which costs to use in my note. And that's really, really important. Now I'm going to go to my answer sheet. Okay, so I'm going to take my answer sheet and then I'm going to write down all my costs and then I'm going to do my calculations. And you'll see, learners, that in that way you keep a clear mind, you focused, you focused on the exercise and you won't go wrong. There's lots of information on the sheet and you must just focus on the question and what is being asked. So let's go to activity one in your workbook and I will work this exercise with you. So in front of me, I've got the answer. Okay, there we go. That's the answer that we want. Factory overhead costs. And there we go. And some learners are working ahead. And that is really what I like because they understand this work. So let's just choose our expenses. We said indirect materials. Okay, so we'll write down indirect materials. That is an, a cost. So you need to also have open learners, you need to have open your questions because I'm now going to be working through the questions as well, okay, to get the calculations. Then we add factory rent, so we're going to write down factory rent quickly. Then we're going to have maintenance or factory maintenance. Okay, water and electricity. Identifying all our expenses. We've got indirect materials, factory, machinery, uh, depreciation, sorry. Going over a bit. So please don't make that mistake that I did now. Factory machinery, it must be the depreciation. Sundry expenses. Wages to cleaner and wages to factory foreman. Okay. 
you will have to write a lot smaller and a, a lot neater than this okay because you have to show calculations and this exercise has got a lot of calculations in it so here we go we're going to go and do our calculations now and put the amounts in so here we go let's start with the indirect materials calculation okay indirect materials i'm going to use my opening stock of 7200 i just want to put this here okay i'm going to use my op opening stock of 7200 then so i'm going to put that down and you're going to do the calculation with me so i'm going to say oopsie 7200 on my calculator okay seven two i'm going to add the raw materials or the indirect materials that i purchased so i'm going to add 56,000 to that because that is what I bought for the year. It says indirect materials purchased for the year, 56,000. And then I'm going to take away my closing stock. So I've used that. I've used opening stock plus my purchases. Okay, plus what I've purchased. Opening stock plus my purchases minus my closing stock minus 7,500. That gives me 55,700. Okay, so indirect materials. Oops. Sorry, you can't see. I took my 72 plus my 56 minus my 75, and I got 55,700. But they say that. 80% of the indirect materials were used in the factory. So I cannot use the full amount. So I say times 80%. And it gives me 44,560. And that is the amount I'm going to put next to indirect materials in my, in my note. Okay, so that's indirect materials done. I see lots of learners are working ahead. Uh, one learner got 44,500 and another learner got 55,700. So that's good. You got that. But just remember, 80% of that is used in the factory and that is the amount that I'm going to use. Okay, I'm not going to use any other amount. So let's put that in. 44,560. Now, learners, I'm, I should be showing my calculation here. Okay, I should be showing it in brackets or I should be showing it on the side, but I simply don't have the space because I'm, I need to write quite big. But please show your calculations for part marks. That is where you earn your part marks. Okay, so now we're going to look at the factory rent. The factory rent is no calculation, so you simply put in 68,500 rand. There's no calculation there. You simply put it in there. Factory maintenance. Okay, I just want to speak about factory maintenance quickly because it's important. You can see here that factory maintenance is 46,700. Okay, 46,700. Repairs amounts to 1,300 and they were completed in June. It will only be paid in July. Now, your financial year ends in June. Okay, your financial year ends in June. So that is what you paid, but you didn't pay. Now remember, when we do adjustments, we must include the amounts that we have consumed or used, the expense that we have consumed or used, we must add it to the amount that we paid. In your production cost statement, you're going to apply the concept of matching. Because the production cost statement is a statement. It's a statement of reporting. You're going to use the GARP principles that apply to your income statement and your balance sheet. So you are going to include your accrued expense. So if you haven't paid an expense, but you've had the repair done, then you must include that expense. And the 1,300 becomes an accrued expense, and that will be paid in the next year. You also need to take out your prepaid expenses. Any amount that you've paid in advance, you have to take out. So for instance, your 
con your concept of matching says that the amount or the the expense that was consumed in that year or the value that was consumed must be included in that year or the income that was earned must be included in that year so your production cost statement must contain 12 months worth of information because it's a reporting statement so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my 46,700 rand and i'm going to plus the 1,300 when it comes to ma uh, factory maintenance okay so it's 46,700 plus 1,300 and my factory maintenance is 48,000. Please write down your calculation as I've shown it so that you know exactly when you go over the work, you know exactly where you got that information from. Water and electricity. They say here, uh, water and electricity paid 80,000. So it was paid for the year, 80,000. This amount is to be split between the factory 70% and the office 30%. So I'm going to take 70% of 80,000 to get my water and electricity amount for the year. So I take 80, water and electricity. Okay, take 80,000. Times that by 70%. And I get 56,000. So my expense for water and electricity is 56,000 for the year for the factory. Okay, 56,000 for the year for the factory. Although I paid 80,000, it's only the 56 that uh, uh, is involved with the factory. My factory machinery depreciation is 12,800. Or my depreciation on factory machinery is 12,800 rand. My sundry expenses, okay, my sundry expenses, I just want to keep this up so that people can copy this down. And if you're ready, I'm going to move on because I'll have to do some calculations now. Okay, so I'm hoping that you got that. Let's look at sundry expenses. Okay, it says here, sundry expenses paid is 21,000. This must be allocated according to the floor space used. The ratio of this space is factory 4, office 2, and sales department 1. Okay, here it says 4 is to 2 is to 1. That's the ratio. So to work out the ratio, you do the following. It's the sundry expenses. A ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 1 means that if you take 4 plus 2 plus 1, my whole is 7. Okay? So what you do is you add the elements of the ratio together to get 7. So for the factory, it is 4 sevenths. So I'm going to take my 21,000 and I'm going to times it by 4 sevenths. And that gives me 12,000. And in the same way, your office will be two sevenths and your sales and distribution will be one seventh of 21,000. So that's how you work out the ratio and I get an amount of 12,000. Okay, so I'll put 12,000 in there. Bear in mind, you're going to show your calculation. Please don't ignore your calculation. Okay, wages to the cleaner, the wages to the cleaner, you simply, let's just read this, it says, wages paid to the cleaner, 46,000, she spends 50% of her time cleaning the factory, 50%, which is half of that, so I'm going to take 46,000 and I'm going to divide that by 2 to get 23,000, so I'm only going to or allocate 23,000 to my factory. 23,000, which is half of her wages because she spends half of the time in the factory and the other half in the office. This calculation here, okay, it's a bit of a difficult one. 
So I'm going to read through it and then I'm going to explain how I'm going to approach this calculation. The factory foreman has been paid a salary of 89,050 Rand for the year. They don't say for the year, but I know that this is the production cost statement for the year. This includes his salary for July. So there's a prepaid amount. We paid his salary in advance. Note, he received an increase of 650 per month from the 1st of Jan. He has been employed all year. So let's work out the salary. Taking all that information into consideration, let's work out the salary for the foreman. Okay, what I do know is that the 89,000 and sorry and 50 consists of a certain amount okay now remember that is actually 13 months because it's from 1st of July right through which includes July 2012 1st of July 2011 right through to the 31st of July 2012 and that's 13 months so that amount is X which I don't know Okay, I don't know what the uh, original amount is at six months and then X at seven months. So I want to work out 13 months worth of salary. What I do know is that that amount was increased by 650. So that amount here is 650 more than that amount there. So that amount there okay is minus the 650 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say 650 times seven because i know that there's seven months worth of salary that contains the 650 more so i take 650 times seven four five five oh that's the total amount of the increase over the period of time so i take my 89050 and I minus my increased amount, my 7 times 650 amount to get what my 13 months at this amount would be. Okay, assuming, okay, I'm not going to make assumptions, but let's just say 50 minus 4550. So 84,500 is my amount over 13 months excluding the increase of 650 that i divide by 13 months i divide that by 13 months and i get 6500 rand so that amount really is 6500 rand that is 6500 rand plus 650 times 7 okay so that's my base amount so now i'm going to add the 650 back plus 650 and I get 7150 and that is my prepaid expense amount. So that whole calculation was simply to work out this amount that I'm going to exclude from the salary of the foreman. So what am I going to put in my calculation? My calculation is simply, let's just look at the amount quickly, 8 9050 minus 7150. So this amount for the year is 81,900 Rand. Not a very easy calculation, okay? But I've seen these calculations pop up in your income statement. Um, over over the past so you need to be aware of the information that's presented to you and how you're going to calculate it this has now cropped up in the production cost statement but otherwise you can also find a similar calculation in the income statement i'm hoping that you paid attention and that you actually understand it um, if you don't then you can ask your teacher to go over it again so now all we're going to do is we're going to add together all these amounts so let's add Oh, and I want someone to come up with the amount. 68,500 plus 
81900 and I get 346760. Okay? And that is 20 marks. 20 marks for that calculation. Let's look at the production cost statement. I haven't mentioned to you direct costs. We haven't spoken about direct costs yet, but I'm going to put my direct costs here. So I'm going to get direct materials and direct labor here. Okay, direct materials, these are all the raw materials. So that is my raw materials. Okay, so all my raw materials, I'll put there. And this year is my factory labor. You can also call this touch labor. In other words, the people who actually physically make the item, they form part of direct labor. And then the, the predominant, um, in other words, what you can see in the product, that is called the direct materials. If I were to take this pen, Okay, it's not a very good example, but what I can see here is like a kind of a metal or plasticky thing, and then I can see a top, okay, and I can see a tip, and there's probably ink in there, and this will, will make up the product. So I will have a component of this pen will be direct materials, and a component of this pen, maybe it's the ink, will be indirect, but both the direct and the indirect will make up the pen, and that is how I work out my costs. Okay, so I'm going to go to my direct materials. I'm going to go back to my exercise and I'm going to look at what direct materials are. Okay, let me just get the exercise. There we go. So, my direct materials are my raw materials. Okay, so there I have it. Yeah, I also have raw material stock. So wherever I see the word raw materials, I need to use in my calculation for direct materials. So remember I said you take your opening stock and your closing stock. So it's opening stock plus your purchases minus your closing stock. So let's calculate that quickly. We're going to calculate our raw materials amount. Okay. So I'm calculate raw materials. So I'm just going to write down the formula. I'm going to take my opening stock, my stock at the beginning, plus my purchases, plus my carriage on purchases, or my transport. Okay, so if I paid for transport for the item, and then I'm going to minus my closing stock but there's something more that you need to know that that is net purchases okay so that is purchases minus returns so let's look at this exercise my opening stock for the beginning of the year is 18,000 okay then it says here during the year, we bought 650,000, I'm going to put this in brackets here, 650,000 rands worth of raw materials, but we returned 35,000. So I'm going to say that minus that, okay, 650 minus 300, so that's 615,000 for my raw materials. Then they say transport cost, 12,300. And then I'm going to minus my closing stock, which is 20,000. And now I'm going to get my raw materials issued to production. So it's 18,000 plus 615,000 plus 12,300 minus 20,000. And I get 625,300 rand. Okay, so that is my raw materials i took my opening stock plus my purchases which is my net purchases which is really my purchases minus my returns don't forget returns learners opening stock plus net purchases 
plus carriage on purchases or transportation or transport okay minus closing stock gives me my amount issued to production so i'm going to put that in by raw material 625,300 rand this is can you see it's quite a bit of working out it's really a lot of working out that you need to consider when you do this work let's just leave this up so that you can look at it okay before i put the next one on there we go. Okay. Right. Now we have three factory workers. Okay. That's my direct labor. Lots of information that I had to consider. Okay. So three factory workers. That's my direct labor. I just want to see if there's any comments. And people have been working out, and that is fantastic. People are getting it right because they understand their work and I'm really really proud that you're getting this work right thank you so much Ashley Peterson and quite a few people Polisa and uh, everyone who's here with me today so let's just look at our factory workers factory workers were employed they each work now this is a language thing so you have to read very carefully uh, uh, for what they are saying each of them so that's three each of them work 1600 hours and they earn 40 rand so in my mind it is going to be three times because that's the each okay 1600 times 40 okay so that's my first calculation that is normal time don't forget a lot of people leave out the each so they just take 1600 times 40 but each of them are working 1600 and each of them are earning 40 rand per hour then it says they each again work 300 hours overtime and it's 50 percent more than the normal time rate 50 percent more than the normal time rate the overtime rate so again it'll be three workers each working 300 hours overtime okay now what would the overtime rate be if the normal time rate is 40 rand then the overtime rate will be 60 rand because it's 50 percent more okay so show the calculation three times six thousand one thousand six hundred times forty and three times three hundred times sixty and let's see if some people have it a hundred and ninety two thousand plus fifty four thousand fifty four thousand plus hundred and ninety two thousand two hundred and forty six thousand let's confirm that three times one six times forty and that is absolutely right a hundred and ninety two thousand three times three hundred times sixty and that is absolutely right for lisa and one plus one ninety two okay so it's you see, you might understand your work, so you really have to read it. I suggest you take a pencil and you underline your work. You underline where you are at. So that is 246,000. Okay, that there, I'm going to put in that block there. I'm going to put factory overhead costs. Okay, and that amount I'm simply going to carry down. 3, 4, 6, 7, 6, 0. Oh. So what I'm going to do is to calculate, I'm going to simply add that together and put the amount there and then add that together and put the amount there. So let's do that very quickly because we've got very little time. Okay, so we're just going to finish up here. 625,300 plus 246,000 and that gives us 871,300 plus 346,000. 760 that gives me 1 million 218,060 rand to that i'm going to add my opening work in progress so i'm going to say plus 35,000 1 2 5 3 0 6 0 okay now i'm going to minus that amount because i want to work out what my closing stock is that's going to go in brackets so that amount minus that amount minus one two one two triple o and it gives me four one oh six oh learners that 
was a really, really a mouthful today. It was really a lot of work that I had to cover in a very short space of time. I still wanted to go through break even with you and I still wanted to answer the next question, but really time does not allow us. This is really an important question. I've seen manufacturing come up in every exam and usually the mark allocation is quite high. If this question here was 36 marks, that X, this is just the question, the section that we've done, okay, that really excludes the other bit, the section B that we haven't done. So it's really is a very important section and you really have to work hard, go through lots of examples. Accounting is about practice, practice, practice. Until we see each other again, enjoy your studies. Thank you very much.